you're good to go whenever. All right, guys, so my name is Lauren, um, and I'm your facilitator today. Um, but I just wanted to go around and start really quick and just say your names, that I have that. Um, and then how does this topic affect your life? How does substance abuse um, affect your day-to-day -day life? Do you have any instances of it in your life? Go ahead and share with your kind of time. If you want to start over here, we'll just go around. Uh, yeah, I'm Dylan Sandoval. Uh, how does substance abuse affect my life? I mean, how the occasional drink and the occasional joint. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm addicted to anything. You're on camera. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I know who I am. Hi, my name is Evan Mars. Um, in house substance abuse can affect me. Well, I run track here at the university, so if I were to drink, you know, my performance on the track would not be good at all. Um, it's proven that it's, you, know, you can't drink or smoke you know, if you want to run well. So. My name is Christopher Wally. Um, I feel like I don't have like a, a direct relationship with like substance abuse, but obviously I live on a college campus, and so I probably see it. Just more do it. Like, it, it, it. I wouldn't like necessarily correlate the two between. Uh, I'm on the same part of I'm Samantha. I kind of feel the same as Chris. Like I don't feel like I have really like a, a problem. Involvement with su substance abuse, but like we're all on the co college campus, so, so obviously we're all like around it every day. Khalil, um, I, I don't have an abuse problem, but um, I've, I've had family members that have had like substance abuse problems, whether that's like alcohol or like prescription drugs or things like that. And I mean, obviously on the college campus, I feel like every everyone's exposed to many different things. So like one of my roommates, he, like my freshman year, he used to always be up at the middle of the night and somebody pointed it out to me like, yo, you think so-and-so is, you know, popping pills or whatever, because his eyes, you know, I was like, you know, I never, I never really noticed it, but I was, I was probably just with myself, all right, bless you. <laughs> this is good. All right, my name's Garrison, and uh, yeah, depression, uh, again, alcohol, like abuse, like, uh, like or, I guess depression medication and alcohol, like, um, abuse has been in my family, and so it's affected a couple of my family members, um, and so seeing that, like, I've learned a lot from just directly seeing that, and uh, I've also seen substances negatively affect uh, my friend's academic performance, and I'd say that it's not a negative effect on my academic performance when I allow like uh, smoking and drinking to like to be like more of a impact on my life than like and, like allow it to be a distraction. So and I think it really off many of us have seen it that way to some extent. My name's Bobby Owen. I drink and smoke sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mason and uh, I've been pretty fortunate to have experience with the abuse or seen that much in my life. I'm Lainey. Um, my mom was actually an alcoholic and she went to rehab and now she's a drug and alcohol counselor. And so I've been aware, she's talked to me many times of just how addictive genes in me and that I can't really experiment as much as some people can because there's just more of a chance for me to get addicted. So I just am always aware of that, but it's all, I still do things, but it's not like I just have to be more aware than other people. Sure. Well, thank you all for sharing. Um, so kind of from this point, I'm going to go ahead and just do a really quick overview of all three of the topics, and then we're going to dive into approach one. Um, if you guys have your guides, it's on the very back. There's like a little cheat sheet paper for you. <coughs> so option one, again, like the video said, focuses on keeping people safe. Um, it focuses on protecting people, the legal side of it, um, laws, penalties, and regulation. The second one addresses conditions that foster substance abuse. So what are the conditions that contribute to it? Whether it's um, social, cultural norms, um, economic conditions, widespread substance abuse, um, what fosters these things. And then the third one is upholding individual freedom. Um, so respecting people's freedom and offering them the ways to get help if they need it, um, provide programs, but let them ultimately make that decision on their own. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into approach one. Um, and I just wanna say keep in mind as we go through this, um, the point of view um, from CSU, because we are talking about CSU as a school and the substance abuse on this campus, um, so you can keep that back in your mind. Um, so kind of overviewing option one, does anyone have any initial thoughts off that, positives, negatives they see in it? 
I think of the war on drugs when I look at option one, which is proven to be unsuccessful. So I don't see this option as the best one because the war on drugs is a national version of option one and it's proven. I would probably kind of agree with that. It's more. I would, it's more of the approach of criminalizing rather than looking at it from an actual like health problem and mental problem. So it, yeah, it's effective. Anyone, anyone have any positives maybe of the approach for kind of two negative sides? I think there's really no. I mean, I think just because since this one's kind of in action already and we haven't seen much growth, I don't think there really is positives to it unless when it comes down to it, there are people who are dangerous and involved in like selling drugs maybe, but that should be prosecuted, but not everyone who has little crime should be. How do you see this approach maybe, because we do have this on a national level like you just said, how do you think um, CSU implements this already? What do you think they do? Do you think they focus more on this policy? What are your thoughts on that? I think like in the dorms they especially focus on this one. Do you think it's effective? Or not effective? I think it depends on the person. I think there's like a lot of rules and regulations out there, but if people have the determination to like partake in the So more those regulations, obviously they have benefits, but at the same time, there's still going to be people who do it and find a way to do it even around the like, uh, strict rules. Anything on this side? You guys have any thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've seen people and heard stories of people like, you know, kind of like getting kicked off of campus and different things of that nature, kind of like essentially um, losing out on a few years of their education because of kind of like different things of that nature and I don't know, I don't, I don't see it being really beneficial. Like I know students even have to take like a, a drug and alcohol course on campus, but I don't know like really how beneficial that is in comparison to like, you know, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say exactly. I, I, I agree, I think people are still going to use and abuse, so I think there kind of has to be something else that kind of impacts it. Yeah. So what I'm hearing basically is that it's not effective currently, what you're, doing, what you're seeing, um, especially on our campus, and that you feel like if they're going to do it, they're going to do it no matter what. Um, so maybe talking to that point, do you guys think there's something we can do as a you know, CSU community, as a campus, whether it's from the student side or the, you know, Reps. It depends on what kind of drug you guys are talking about too, and alcohol, particularly like marijuana is legal in the state, but it's a federal, prohibited federally. So I mean, I don't know. They're, 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 they have smoking areas, but there's not designated smoking areas for weed smokers or whatever. So I think there should be some kind of class that like people have to take and they have to pass. You know that deals with alcohol, use of alcohol, and other drugs. For like a real thorough like course. Like, really well, wasn't there yeah, that class like you take as a freshman before you? Yeah, but, in the yeah, yeah, but that's like that's like really short. It's, it, it's not like it's, it's just not in depth enough. It's like an orientation. It's, that, it's more like, of a situational like, than the actual like what it can do to you and like your future. Yeah. It's more of like this is how you approach this what like situations in college rather than. Um, yeah. So what what about like uh, some type of program? in a sense, like a program that, uh, like right now I'm in a development course through my college, right? Uh, to learn how to study better, take better notes, different things like that, right? Some type of program or a course like that, right? That goes over maybe like uh, like drug and alcohol abuse consumption and maybe like mental health. Because personally, I think a lot of people that have unhealthy habits also have a lot of things going on in their life that maybe they just not addressing in the right way, if that makes sense, you know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that definitely talks to approach two, which we'll go into more. Um, but kind of pull, pulling back a little bit, you guys are talking about the alcohol EDU course that you know you want us to take the online thing. Um, do you think that that coupled with what CSU is doing is effective? 
or do you think there is a substance problem on CSU's campus? Do you think there is a problem here? Um, I think there's a problem on all campuses. Like, you know, like I know, like I know kids that you know we have fakes, you know, fake IDs. It's just like it's always going to be a problem, you know, at, at every university that you go to. It's just. I don't know how much energy you want to put into it. Yeah, how much energy you want to put into it. Like, you know, you know, being a flyer, yeah. having those kind of courses, um, maybe having like a, like a separate like online uh, class for it or something, even if it's not like a lecture. Yeah, but like, you know, I don't know. Yeah, 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 I don't know. <laughs> and that could be something that would be taught to like having people be more aware of when they of like addiction so like people can actually decide that for themselves because that's and that will talk about a lot more in approach three also is that you know making that decision for yourself and how do we educate people on that. Um, so some of the, uh, we've gone over a lot of the, draw, the drawbacks and trade-offs and we'll put their little column down here. Um, the nanny site approach that it talks about, you know, are you being nannied, are you being told what to do? Do you think that's important on a college campus for, you know, people coming into college for the first time, or do you think that's negatively impacting the substance abuse problem? I think it should be like what you should do to be successful or what you can do and then things that make you less successful. But I don't think that it should necessarily be an imposed rule unless you're a minor, like you can't drink legally. Because I'm old enough to drink, so you know, if I, like he said, if I get out of a class taking a tough test or something, and you guys have a bar downstairs and I want to have a drink before I go home, I don't think that's an issue. But if I get all fucked up down there, <laughs> you know what I mean, and start yelling at girls and whatever, but that's a whole different trip. You know, so. I don't know, I think you have to make clear rules. And, I think coming from like a student's perspective and like being. 20s, the more you tell someone not to do something, the more they're going to want to do it. And I think like that's kind of true in college, like yeah. that the more, and like people coming in to college that don't have their parents around, they take that, they can take it way differently when people are still trying to control them, because in their eyes they're like, I'm finally free. And so it kind of, if anything, maybe like makes them want to do it more because they're like, there's those rules. And they tell you to do things that feel good too, like drinking. I don't know, for people that don't drink, like I enjoy having a drink and stuff. You know, different things. It's cool. You know, so different experiences I think lead to it too. So if you have a bad experience or something, you're probably not going to do that again. But you know. So kind of that self-taught learning experience. You learn by doing and making a mistake and understanding. Yeah, that's what you're kind of like set up now. It's like we've lived with our parents like all these years. We've been told what to do and what not to do, and then we get to college and we can make like our own decisions. And if you choose to drink and smoke and all that stuff, and we see like our grades start to hurt, then I think we're at the point in our lives where we need to like decide like, okay, I can't be doing that if I want good grades. Or, so I think it's the people that can't decide between those two. That so one of the um, those classes that's more called up to do college. Does anyone else have anything to say on that point? I can tie us into the next approach. And, uh, kind of speaking off that, um, you're talking about how it's a college thing. I think a couple people have brought that up. It seems like the college scene, it's the college thing to do. We are on campus. Um, the second approach talks about, you know, the conditions that are fostering substance abuse, whether that is having a bar, you know, downstairs in the LSC, whether it's having, you know, movies, um, TV shows. Can you guys speak maybe to that? Is the glamorization the problem? Um, or is it even a problem? Is it fine the way that the society is handling it right now? Yeah, it's definitely in the media, you know, in movies and video games, and the way that it's being portrayed, it's being portrayed so, like, nonchalant that, like, I can kind of get why it's a you know, like, you know, like, like, you know, we look at those kind of things and we don't think that it's, it's bad, you know, because it, it's, it's just kind of there, it's kind of just always there, you know, so. Um, I think when it comes to like, you know, the kids coming from high school, like, they should, you know, kind of be taught that, like, you know, this, this, isn't, this, this isn't a good thing, you know, to be you know, that drugs are bad because of the video game and the movies, but, you know, it's kind of based off, you know, like, off the parents too, you know, like, how these children are being raised, essentially, like, before they come to college, you know, 
it's the fact that like if you one have of the this, strongest arguments I wrote down for option two it, was that pharmaceutical you know, industries spend about 19 times more on marketing than they do research. And I also and I know that America is one of the few developed uh, countries that can advertise for pharmaceutical yeah, yeah, I think that's um, just like medicine and things like that. So uh, because, now like things like depression pills and things of that nature have become like the fix all answer opposed to going to counseling and working out with they just kind of throw pills at a lot of people so that happened. Uh, my mom was in a car accident and uh, they gave her oxycodone and now she needs it. And people build a dependency on pharmaceutical things as well. So they must give more information about the negative effects of these things to how they smoke. Do you guys believe in CSU we have any of these conditions that kind of foster the substance abuse? Um, or as students we have conditions that do that, like this approach kind of suggests? Um, I think also, yeah, with like the controlled substances of like Adderall or Ritalin, that definitely like the promotion of that in a way, like students want to get ahead. And so I think um, kind of uh, the stresses of life more sometimes forces people to take those. So I think it definitely feeds on that. Right. And, yeah, and so you pretty much have to, like, see, so can you relate to it? Anyone else have anything about that? Yeah, I, well, I think yeah. that it is interesting that, like, CSU, like, they do, like, I mean, like, they spend so much time and, like, resources trying to educate people on the negative, like, effects of alcohol. And I feel like a fair amount of people are already aware of that, but, like, not as many people would be aware about, like, what the negative effects of Adderall is. And, like, that is something that is becoming more and more popular in our like in our um, society, and so I, I I think that if they're gonna try to have awareness campaigns, like awareness of like what side effects for Adderall are, and like also like awareness for like like not mixing certain substances with other substances, so like you should not mix an antidepressant with a depressant, like uppers and downers do not mix, like that can help prevent. Um, not only substance abuse, but also like some serious hospitalization and death. So, yeah. Now, where do you think problems like this, including the CSU community, often happen? Where do you think these problems in society come from, um, and kind of what can we address in those areas? Whether it's on CSU's campus, what can we address here specifically? Um, I know a lot of people talk about education. Um, giving people that information. What about in other places in society? I think at home, like you said, it starts out with your parents kind of like, if you got parents that are more involved and they kind of know what's going on with you, um, you know, it's easier to prevent somebody from like falling into that, uh, you know, vice or whatever. So if, if you can, I think awareness by, you know, people that are uh, supposed to be aware all the time, like parents, teachers, counselors, stuff like that. So I think education is a big part of it, but accountability too. So if there's nobody that, and I'm not talking about law enforcement, but you know, if there's nobody to, and I think that goes back to the different stuff, psychology and stuff, because we tend to be drawn to things that like, we like, or you know, our friends have the same values as us or whatever. So I think that has to change too. So I don't know where the, education process starts for somebody to try to prevent them from being a substance abuser. Could anyone who, uh, I know there are a few people who said that there was substance abuse in their lives in some way or another, um, or they've seen it in other people, um, where do you think that maybe stemmed from that could have been addressed? Is there something you can speak on to that? Yeah, I think coming from like uh, my mom being an addict and then also being a counselor is that it definitely comes down to, I think I believe that it comes down to genetics, that people either have the addictive gene or they don't, and obviously people can't develop it over time, but maybe like a way to be more aware is when you maybe send in your health records with to be enrolled, they can also tell you like, just be like, oh, you have a history of substance and just addiction problems within your family, that's when they maybe can like imply courses on like certain people who might like have those genetic. So, so it kind of like maybe targets that way because I think that does play a really big part in that like substance use for sure. It's the just, yeah. 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 Because like I could go out every weekend and then be totally fine with not going out another weekend in my life and doing anything like that. But I like also have friends where I like, they like 
of that kind of stuff. And yeah, they did yeah. not to like a different level, but they like enjoy it differently than like I would enjoy it or something like that. And like that, they're all like their parents are known to be addicted or like alcoholics and stuff like that. And so I can see it like kind of trickle down and the genetics. And then I would say through traumatic experience um, comes like different things like substance abuse or lack of education too but definitely with like traumatic experiences or like different things that uh, individuals um, experience either prior to maybe the years of development like college or something like that I think those definitely have a major effect uh, other things such as like stress so um, I think those have a major plan of substance abuse especially like with prescription drugs or different things like accessibility. Like I have had like a, a family member that was a nurse and she was, you know, she had access to prescription drugs, but she was also like going through different things at her life, in, in her life at that time, right? So it's kind of like, um, I don't know, I think traumatic experiences very much influence so and kind of like mental health of uh, people where, wherever, if you're from an inner city or a rural, area I think the lack of like kind of like mental health awareness and how we as a people need that um, I think those all have a major play in the why people seek to a substance or to a party or whatever to kind of like relieve all that's going on if that makes sense. I definitely agree on that part because especially being in college there's always just that constant anxiety of you have a lot of money on the line and then there's sometimes in classes where like professors it just makes it seem like pretty much like there's no you can't like go back from there and there's just like that building anxiety that like college students have where like even if you like wake up and you think like seem fine there's just like so much on the line for your career that it definitely draws people to numbing the stress. I had a roommate one time that uh, he failed the whole semester out. All he did was smoke weed and play video games the whole time. And his dad came to our dorm and he tried because he, he tried to tell his dad that we were part of the problem too, you know. But there was three of us in there and we all the other me and the other guy went to class and did fun and all the The guy just never kept you So it can really affect people if they don't get control of anything. So how do you think this approach, looking at the, the triggers, the underlying problems, um, how do you think we could address those? We already talked about education. Um, are there, are you talked about specific classes, are there other pathways we could um, look at? I know in the approach it talks about um, creating better jobs for disadvantaged communities um, where problems like this can foster. Um, or substance abuse treatment. Um, or just the idea behind it, you know, the taboo of it. Anyone can speak to that. Let me create like alternatives to substance abuse. So if stress is a uh, you know an issue, then um, find different ways to address the stress that don't involve alcohol or drugs. So, so you know exercise, yeah. Pills with the problem. Stop. Yeah. Well, that's the way the that's the way it is here in the United States. So I mean, you could either go to a doctor and get it prescribed, or go across the street usually like in certain neighborhoods. So how do you guys think we can change the culture behind that? Um, you, know, you guys brought up you know, the idea that he was kind of touching on the idea of you know doctors throwing pills at the problem. How do you think we address that from a greater standpoint to kind of get away from that to stop that practice? Some of the, some of the most powerful uh, commercials I've seen are the anti-smoking and the anti-meth commercials, which are very visual depictions of how negative these things might be for you. So maybe in more in the media, filter with the negative effects, not just smoking cigarettes and all those things, but maybe this lean into pharmaceutical companies and things like that. The bureaucracy of our Yeah, um, I was going to say maybe just like more activities that are available to um, uh, oh, sorry, a, a mass population like uh, yoga or something, including like mindfulness and wellness, or um, um, I want to say like advertisements, I want to say anything of that nature, but more so like uh, kind of like a, I, I feel like it's a 
broad question in a sense, like shifting the culture as far as to like how one release stress, you know. I feel like uh, different ways we as people in our current society release stress is due to kind of like things that are already imprinted in our culture. So, which is why people either go to pills or some other alternative, which is why people either exercise or do various other activities to kind of like relieve that. So, I don't, I don't know. So, I'm hearing this more like having those programs available that don't foster substance abuse, like no, giving alternate programs, doing alternate activities that don't focus so heavily on substance abuse or giving people access to those. Mm -hmm. that, that's available to like the general, general population, though, right? So, like within the uh, inner city or very rural com uh, communities that kind of like don't have access as um, other communities might. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, well, I I don't know. I'm, I'm not aware of this if the campus offers like AA meetings or NA meetings, like free NA meetings for students. But I think having a community where someone can come just to open up and have their feelings about addiction, I think uh, relating to like college students. And if you do like make that step to think you do have a problem, it would be nice to have those resources to have the support um, within I think the college kind of as a bundle. And also kind of just what I touched on was, I don't even know what it would be like on me in a way, but just like looking at people's health information and uh, recognizing that their family has the uh, history of abuse and that those people are the ones that are definitely required to have like a class of, like an educational class, but I don't know, like weeding people out like that probably would be nice. So you get to the, are you being targeted for? Yeah, like it's more of like a targeting thing, but it definitely is like would help like that. Now you touched on upon both of you upon like CSU's kind of options that they have, uh, whether it's you know providing AA meetings, um, providing alcohol-free activities. Do you think CSU does a good job of this, or should they do more? They should have alcohol activities to go for the people that can choose alcohol. You know what I mean? Like there should be. There should be uh, for both sides, but maybe in the party setting, you provide education on you know the the bad things that come with it. You know, so people like they said people are going to do it anyway, whatever they choose to be. So maybe educate the people that are already doing it too. Instead of like I think relating to like the options that we do have, like the stress relieving options that are like Khalil said, like yoga options or something like that. I mean, they're definitely out there and available. It's just like a matter of getting people there to them because I know, like, some of my friends, like, their image, they won't go to yoga class because they're like, if my football friend sees me at the yoga class and they go, like, in the oval, they're gonna, you know what I mean? Like, it's just all based on image. It's more changing the cultural. The like, cultural they're not gonna be caught at a yoga class trying to relieve stress. Instead, they're gonna be at the football party at Aston Heights. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, how do we address that? How do we even yeah. change that? And should we change it? Is that fine? Oh, well, like, like, word of mouth. Like, what I tell my friends now, and they, they find it weird, you know what I'm saying? But I've been saying that, I've really been thinking about it. I, I work at the dining hall, so like, I, don't, I try not to eat like too much meat or too much pork, so I'll be eating the veggie sauces. But we tell my friends to stay healthy, right? So kind of like word of mouth, I, I tell people all the time to stay healthy. And or I'll be like, oh, you're looking healthy, and they, they get kind of weirded out. But it's a good message behind it, right? So, I mean, I think like different things like just really like letting somebody that maybe you just might know that's an acquaintance or whatever, if they say something, you're like, nah, you should probably, you know what I'm saying, you try and do that to relieve your stress, yo, there's this good class I'm about to go to, you know what I'm saying, my neck was feeling right, I woke up with a crook in my neck the other day, or something like that, you know, like, I think if you change your, your uh, the, it's like word of mouth, right, if you change things within yourself, you can kind of like affect why, why a majority, effect. yeah, yeah, yeah. a ripple effect. I think to feed off of that, maybe providing ways on how to approach friends that you might think have a problem, because I think that is actually one of the big factors of addiction is when someone, uh, treating someone who is addicted, they, it's hard to approach them and hard to make them, because the first step is acceptance. So like, they, to them, don't think they do have a problem. So I think educating, people on like, well, if you don't have a problem, like this is what you do if your friend does. And this is the best way that you can tell them that, you know, just the healthiest way to get them help. Okay. Understand. Was someone else over here going to say something? Not that way, but I, no. 
All right, well, cool. We can tie that into the next approach of holding individual freedoms. So you guys are talking about giving people resources, giving people those yoga classes, you know, giving people education. Um, so this approach really focuses on providing that information, giving them accessible treatment options, providing an AA meeting, things along those lines that you brought up. Um, do you think that these are, I obviously think they're possible, do you think CSU should implement them, could implement them? Um, and what can some of the drawbacks be? Do you see negatives to that? <laughs> I think like implementing yoga, like there's already like yoga classes and classes like available on campus that I feel like people do have access to and still like if they were like adding more I don't know how like well people would still go to those even though there's like just the act of getting people I don't think it would really increase it. I think a drawback would be like making like classes like that yeah, mandatory where like, like, it doesn't pertain to them, they take advantage of like resources where they can be invested in people that actually have like an issue. So like if you like force everyone to go through it, then you're just like wasting the time of those people that are taking the time to like teach the subjective stuff when it can be a smaller like group that they could get more benefits out of it rather than a mandatory meeting where everyone was like still in their social groups and stuff and now people go it's I don't know that problem and stuff so that could be like a drawback is like they can be mandatory. Um I think it it could be good like in in various ways like maybe professors announcing that in the classes, right? That would be a, a big thing to do, right? But at least every professor in the beginning and after of the lecture or whatever announced, like, this is what's going to be going on this week, just in case anybody's worried about it. This is where you can find it. Maybe, you know, add, add it up, uh, as a part of a slide presentation or something, beginning or end. I think something like that would be beneficial. Um, the only drawback that I could really see coming from that it's just um, like uh, it not being enough like just that that like the sessions not being above enough for like maybe individual students so maybe like seeking more help after but, um, so that definitely, I think what I'm pulling out of that, there's, you know, can we trust students to use these resources? Should I give them to them? How do we get them to use them? You know, how do we get them to have yoga classes? The attendance is young and people. How, how do we foster that community of, you know, people admitting they have a problem? Can we trust people to do that? Do we need more regulation on that? I think you take the opportunity away, so like, like, I think, uh, I don't know how you do it, but creating more programs is one way, but like identifying specific times that it's more prevalent than now, you know, like Friday nights, typically, you know, everybody's down to studies for the week. They go get paid to let them Offer them some alternative Yeah, something else, you know what I mean? <laughs> like so, something to fill that, that space of time. Um, as an alternative to substance abuse or partying or whatever. Something about that? Or if you had a previous point, go ahead and speak on that. Any ideas for that? Anything you think would appeal to college students? Because I know uh, if someone had brought up earlier events that CSU does hold uh, that just aren't that popular, you know, is there something else they could do to kind of get college students? Something cooler than getting faded on Friday. No, I was just going to say, I feel like it, it, it always gets to a point to where, like, you know, when we do, like, hit 21 and, like, you know, and up, like, we're all going to all casually have a drink, but that casual drink turns into, like, you know, more shots and more of this. So, like, I don't know. I guess the responsibility of, like, just, I don't know. I guess this is going to sound weird, but, like, learning how to balance drinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, just be responsible. Yeah, being responsible, like, starting off with this, like, knowing your limit and saying, okay, like, you're good, like, Everyone knows, like, you know, with, like, that, that first, like, bud, like, it's, like, you know, you're fine, but, like, not going beyond that, like, it's trying to be responsible with, like, around other people, you know, like, yeah, I think just learn how to drink, how to, how to drink smart, I guess. And at the same time, I'm sorry, at the same time, there's people that, like, take advantage of drinking, there's also students that can go out every weekend and get straight days, like, so yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah. like, there's, like, balance or like there's students that drink every weekend or drink every night and like don't do good in school but there's also students that can balance their life so well that they can't go out every weekend and drink and then still once school starts they get straight A's and stuff like that so like uh what, what are um, like promoting it like maybe like 
the DJ at the bars or something like that when they're spinning or doing whatever they're doing. Hey, y'all remember, you know what I'm saying, drink some water. You know, I, I think personally, like, that's how you, we affect kind of like the masses. Like, yes, y'all are still doing this, but just be wary. Like, uh, kind of like uh, like if you ever been to a pool party in the beginning of the school year or, or at the end, and they promote, like, safe sets and they have condoms and stuff like that at the event. Kind of like the same thing, but kind of like substance abuse and awareness. Just maybe in those settings, yes, it's acceptable by us, but when we... Yeah, yeah, be, be smart about it. Yeah, yeah. You know how at like, least I think they have the football phones where like, you know how they have like that Thursday night, like it's like free for women, mm -hmm. like, you know, guys like buy shots for women, like they don't pay for anything. Like, to me that's not, it's not, it, that's not good because it's like, you know, these, you know, beautiful women are just, women are getting, you know, all, the, all, all of this liquor in their system. And it's like, that's not a good look, you know? So that shouldn't be promoted like, oh, like, yeah, it can be ladies night, but it should be like ladies night, like it should be monitored. You know what I'm saying? Kind yeah. Of, or like all the college deals that happen on like Mondays and Tuesdays, like penny pictures and stuff like that, that like the local bars are like supporting the issue that like you have college deals go out on Monday nights and they should be focusing on like safety and stuff like that. Because like the deals are so good that you just like can't pass them up. So how could local bars, because um, that seems to be a recurrent theme, or parties or things, community events that are promoting this alcohol use, um, how could they offer, you were talking about like, having condoms there, um, how, 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 how would they work like, on this? You have to promote And like, I don't know, football games, they have those people that walk around with the water, and they're like, if you drink this water, you get the cool CSU. But like, they're just walking around handing out free water. And I just think, like, when the bars let out, even if they have water and Fort Collins, like, in the square, so people will like take people it. On the streets or something. Like, like, people no will take it. And I know you can't have it, like, just sitting at the bar because nobody's just going to pick up a random glass of water. You know what I mean? Like, but once the bars let out and everybody's just kind of, like, mingling around the square, if there are places where you can just grab a bottle of water, like, people would take it. I think like a con to like all of this and just from uh, what her mom has told me is just that like at the end of the day there's so many instances of her of just helping in rehab and having them go through it all and then a week later they like, die because they uh, relapsed and so there is that point though where it's like there's so much you can do but at the end of the day it's just the individual. It's just kind of their addiction, and so there's so much you can do to take them away from it and to give them as much help as they need. But by the time it's like they're like alone, and they make that decision. Well, what do you think the causes of these relapses? Um, is it tied to the culture? Is it tied to lack of education? Is it tied to um, not having resources? Where do you guys think the biggest problem with relapses are? Where we could, you know, if we could do anything else, where we could kind of focus on those relapses? I think it's personal addiction, honestly. Like, there's no, I don't think there's any correlation between education or anything like that. It's just personal addiction. Oh, you do. <laughs> like, it's not like popular to be yeah. like a drug addict. Like, don't portray that necessarily. Like, like people still die. And so, like, to help those people, it's not like, say, oh, be drug addicts. Like, but, like, it's just inevitable within themselves. Who's your personality? Like for my family, like our, our culture anyway, Hispanic culture, at least in my family, like we drink to celebrate stuff and we drink to celebrate losses too. So like if you're having a tough day, you usually drink and if you're having a great day, you know, you have a drink too. So like, you know, if somebody's born, they have, they kill a pig and there's a big old party, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like entrenched in my culture. Um, but that doesn't mean that like, you know, obviously you got to be able to recognize the difference between abuse and, you know, uh, somebody celebrating somebody's birth or whatever, you know what I mean? But um, I think that's a problem and then it ties into education, you know, I think. So I disagree with them in that aspect that I think that you have to have, um, you know, a general base knowledge of what you want to do and the culture plays a big part of it, like how we're raised and our parents, I know it came, it came up a couple times. So, you know, until we change that culture or change that uh, thinking process, uh, we're not going to get a different result. You know, if our parents grew up by parents that were drinkers and, you know, they went through the similar things than us, um, 
the pattern's already there. You know, the likelihood of us to abuse is going to be higher than other people. So you just, I think, recognizing things that are going to cause that stuff, triggers and different things. I also think like a, a lack of a support system causes people to kind of like relapse. Just kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know, I think that influences a lot, kind of like um, regarding to the subject. I think a support system is very crucial for a lot of people in our lives. And, and I think that if you, it's, it's kind of like one of those things where you have it or you don't, you know. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably yeah, a, a, another reason why I think people could be as just feel like a support system, like lack of people around them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I kind of think that if they, and if they don't have that support system, you're saying kind of create that support system for them, mm. how we can do that. Um, you had mentioned AA meetings. Um, how could we create you know, those false support systems, those fake support systems um, for people who you know, don't have that support? How can we do that, either as a society or at CSU? Another thing that you might be able to do to help people at CSU is just like more tutors and stuff. Because I know, you know, one of the biggest issues for people in school is like if they get behind in classes, and typically people that are going to be abusing drugs and alcohol are going to be behind in classes. So I think recognizing that, you know, there's more problems coming too. I think so. Creating more ways for them to get themselves out of the, you know, whatever's driving them to drink it or whatever. You know, so like a mentor or something. Yeah, you know, like if, if, if you're behind in your classes and that's what's causing you to drink every day, you know what I mean? Um, different ways to bring them out of that, you know. And, um, I don't know that you can necessarily uh, take each individual and, you know, say you're less accountable for your studies or whatever, but maybe create ways to, uh, like extra credit opportunities or something, you know, to kind of get back on track. Yeah, I actually agree with that. Like, you can think about like universities, this university. We have all these clubs and all these programs. Yeah. We have all these different things. But like, that would be like a cool, like little, you yeah. know, a club type thing. Is like if, if, if there were like some mentors who understand alcohol and what each individual alcohol, you know, what it is and what it can do to your body and stuff. And like, for kids to be able to be able to walk through a door and be like, hey, like you know, this past weekend I struggled. You know, can you help me? Like, that, that's something that can easily be done. Now okay, you had mentioned that you know, maybe the professors are going to provide incentives of extra credit or things like that. Um, is it up to the professors or is it up to the students? Um, that's a major contention with this, you know, especially. Is whose, whose job is that to enforce it? Where is that line of too much? Yeah, it's up, ultimately up to the student. At the end of the day, like we got a choice. We either do our own work or we don't. And it's all based off a point system. But, you know, like, I, like I said, I had a roommate that screwed his whole semester off. So I know that if there was some kind of a safety net in there that could have caught him before, uh, it would have probably changed his semester at least. You know? Well, there sort of is like, I know when I was a freshman, there's, there's something called U turn or something. I don't know if they still have that. So if the university recognizes that you're like not doing well the first half of the semester, I think it happens like before the withdrawal deadline, but they have like this program called U-Turn where they offer a couple days and just full days where you can go literally just get your entire semester turned around because there is that support system there for you. Well, I think like, like the university monitor, monitors it because they just send you an email like, hey, I noticed in this class, this class, and this class, you're not doing well. Here's what you can do to get it turned around. And not realizing But that's only like, I think that's only freshman year. I don't know. I don't even know if that's only freshman year. And I think they're just. But so clearly, I mean, only, you know, I think a few people are going to about it, but, you know, how programs like that, I don't know, you know, they're market informed, they're on the plaza, people to do it, how do you get that out there? It's such a big I mean, campus. the only reason I hear about it was just in the dorms, like, I just remember in the dorms seeing the signs as I would walk through the hallway, it's like, up to my room, that it would just remind you, like, that you turn, even if you, like, don't get the email, it's still an option to go, like, just because... So you need it doesn't necessarily care. mean that that's the only person that can attend it. Like, you can attend it regardless, just nobody knows about it. So how do we address no one knowing about it? Uh, you had mentioned word of mouth. Um, some other people had mentioned advertising. 
what is most effective kind to college students? As a college student, looking at it, how would you be most receptive to these kind of things? It has to be something outrageous, you know what I'm saying? It has to be something wild where people are colluding, you know what I'm saying? Like a big event or something. Exam mm -hmm. reviews or something like that. <laughs> like some, on the day of a review or something, or the day of an exam. It had to be when you get everybody there, because like, you know, everybody knows that the day, the class after exam is right here, because I or a lot of them in big lecture halls anyway, you know. Um, what makes so like, it has to be a big event, and then like for this generation, and just the way the world's gone, social media, it's everything. It, 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 you walk around the campus, everyone's looking like this, everybody. So like, promoting it on Instagram, or something, Snapchat, like, you know, like they have the little phone call snaps or whatever, like, mm. put yeah. something for real on your phone. Yeah, yeah. Some some yeah. Some yeah. Some yeah. Some yeah. A couple of different yeah. albums. Yeah. Not like, not like that one, what I'm saying, like, yeah. like, get like a separate, a separate, like, <laughs> like, like phone call. Make sure while you're watching all this legal activity. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no problem. There's no problem. Yeah. Just that pops up. You're saying something along those lines. I don't know. I didn't want to get this side I think that's the thing though, I mean like you know, CSU already has like Instagram and Facebook and like and probably a Snapchat, but like people aren't gonna be like people don't really look on like the CSU Facebook page. Like like their Facebook posts only get like a few hundred likes. So I don't know, maybe like text messaging, like maybe people at least will read that and receive it. Like, but you can opt out of that and like some people just get irritated with that. Like I know when I get Tony Frank's emails, the chance of me reading them is like Slim to none. Or, like, or he like posted to Canvas or something. Because oh, that's I mean, I'm mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, every day. And that's good. Everybody has to go to Canvas. So if, if it's just posted right there on hey, the front. If you're not doing something good because of mental health, <laughs> you don't do it. Substance abuse, you're not going on Canvas. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. that definitely ties in. Right. The, you know, you're giving them that option, but if they're already lost, so. They're not checking Canvas. I so I, I, think, I, I guess the way you could trap them, like how he said, Canvas, maybe it'll be something before you log in, like a page that you know you're directed there before you're log, logged on, and then it traps every single person. They, <coughs> they have to look at it at least. But there's automatic like sign ons. Like yeah. I haven't signed on to Canvas in forever. I well, don't have my computer yeah. and I yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. Well, I also think because we're here for all the same reason is to get a job. Promoting actually like good jobs that help with like addiction counseling and actually promoting like those like jobs to students being like this is actually a really good resume builder. You can help other students. Like pretty much what we all look at for is just like it gives you experience, gives you money, and so like having those like that exposure to something that you know, selfishly benefits us but can also benefit people in that way just kind of and like something that has great like ref well, no yeah but like something that has like great references and, like that actually does help your career in other ways like I think people will be more accepting that is kind of what you're saying yeah pretty much if it affects the future it more gets us money then we're like yeah more wanting to do it <laughs> but then that goes against the free freedom of choice that you brought up to, you know? Like even when, even if you go over the their medical records or whatever, like you know, me and your me medical records might be the same, but you have different goals, so you might have never drank in your whole life. You're completely against it, so it'd be I think that'd be wrong to make people do something based off what their parents did. Too, you know? And in a society where um, we do have so much focus on the individual person and accepting people who they are and not judging them. Um, how does that play a role? How cause, uh, could that be positively yeah. taken or very negatively yeah. taken? That approach. Well, it's like the um, when Trump said that you know he keep all the Muslims and he just generalize. You know, so it's, it does play a big role. It has to come down to the individual. It's their choice to drink or not. In, in the end. <laughs> um, I would just say if, if we're kind of like raising awareness about programs again maybe at like sporting events and like fraternity and sorority life you know so uh, kind of like those major events um, I know the Career Center uh, does a good job um, when they throw like kind of like some of their workshops throughout the year but yeah just 
if we were talking on campus. Yeah. Those areas. Yeah. I personally don't think any type of effective change, you know, really doesn't come. I think universities might have to go in very unorthodox type of ways to really connect with, you know, a, a vast audience, you know. There's only so much that the university can do with advertisement, advertising, promotion, and hiring people to, you know, um, kind of like get people more involved. Yeah. I understand saying that about the college though, oh, because yeah, if yeah, somebody sorry. does more in school, then they get them. They're the ones that are going to reap the benefits. Obviously, you're going to have to retake that. Uh, I was just going to say, like, <laughs> you're still paying for more classes if you fail the other class. So, technically, like, it's benefiting the university if students aren't doing well. Like, they don't look at it that way, but it still is because they're Either still way, they're gaining money. Like, yeah. that's repeat I mean, like, delete is that's a great that's program. That's like, I'm not saying that's a bad program because. Like, I've had to do it, too, but they're just getting more money from you each time you do it. It all comes back to it. So, what I'm hearing, basically, is that, unfortunately, it does end up, oh, fortunately and unfortunately, it comes down to the person. That's kind of how we're all feeling. The best way is to address this education, um, programs uh, that you guys would like to see at the CSU level, um, things that are really going to give people those options to get help, relieve stress in other ways, like you had mentioned. Um, are kind of the best ways that you're seeing to combat this problem that we do have at CSU. Census? It's a way. And it's definitely a hard problem. <laughs> and with that, if anyone has any closing remarks, and then we're good to wrap up. Any closing remarks on that? Final thoughts? Thank you all very much for your thoughts. Thank you guys. We have a different sheet that we have to turn in next class. They're going to give us one. I think they're going to give us one. Yeah, let me grab the sheets for y'all if you guys want to see It's just for them, too. I don't think it's a graded. I don't know if there's something you guys fill up. Let me see really quick for you. While we fill up. Yeah, you have to. Yes. Okay, guys. So you guys are going to turn this back to your teacher, and they're going to turn back into us. Um, we're going to report right back to the CSU Health Network um, and tell them to get going on this. <laughs> Do we have to put our names on um, I think yes, but the one that goes to the professor yeah. can like, record your name. Yeah, it's just for your professor. That part won't go to anyone, you know, higher up. Um, <laughs> Tony Frank, you better read that email. Tony Frank's in here reading all of them. I didn't get no emails. That's all. Do you have more? I believe it's next class period. I'm actually going to get you Hey, the discussion's up too, guys. Are you guys there? Oh, okay. Let me do that. I think we have like two more minutes to like chill for a second. It's on framing. There you go. Thank you. Alrighty, folks. I hope we had a good conversation today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you're interested in further kind of exploring doing what your facilitators did today, they'll be doing that in the community. Um, come talk to me uh, right now. I have applications for the program. Uh, it, it is highly uh, You get credit for it as a sponsor. Great class. If you're interested. But otherwise, um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you later. Thank you guys so much for Thank you. Sorry. Do a spare man that didn't. Yeah,